Hello students, I am Dr. Tanmay Vishash. I welcome you all in my channel Chemistry the Mystery of Molecules. Today's topic of discussion is one MCQ in front of you about silens or better to say alkene silen. So the condition and reaction is in front of you. I request you student please pause the video, try by yourself and whatever answer you get please write in the comment box along with few words explaining your answer. And don't hesitate because Self-evaluation is essential for improvement and don't worry after some time we'll get the right answer with mechanism. So I believe you have tried by yourself. So let's start. Now if you look at this problem little carefully, this is a very small molecule means one this silane and another is this alkene. So two types of functional groups are possible and reagents are MCPBA and BF3 etherate. So second option. Now if you look at this MCPBA, this is metachloroparbenzoic acid, means this is the Cl and this is par acid and in par acid of MCPBA, these two oxygens are very electron deficient because they are in minus 1 oxidation state. They prefer to get reduced into minus 2 oxidation state. So that is why they oxidize someone. Now, which one is most easy to oxidize? These options silicon or alkene? Obviously alkene. Why? Because alkene have this pi bond and pi bonds are formed by the sidewise overlap of p orbital. Means the electron cloud clouds are loose, loosely held by these two carbon atoms. So that is why reaction will happen or oxidation will happen on this double bond. So what happens when alkene oxidizes in uh, MCPBA? Simple epoxide formation. I have already discussed about this reaction previously. Now, so in first step this MCPBA converted this thing in epoxide. Fine. In the second step what is given? BF3 etherate. And we know this BF3, this boron's outermost valence cell of 6 electrons means it is actually a Lewis acid. So the next step is epoxide opening with Lewis acid. Why I am saying this? Because this oxygen have lone pairs of electron and oxygen and boron belongs to the same group, second row element means same row. So their overlap is better. So what will happen? These boron will overlap with this BF3 will coordinate to this oxygen lone pair. So consequently this boron will have a formal negative charge and these oxygen atom will have a formal positive charge. Now positive charge on oxygen is not that much stable or electron deficiency on oxygen atom is not desired because oxygen is most very high electronegative atom. So it prefers to keep the electron density on itself. It don't like to keep a positive charge. So what it will do? It will increase the electron deficiency on these two neighboring carbons. Fine, delta plus, delta plus. Now, when the oxygen is having a positive charge, it tries to generate carbocation. So two options are there. These carbon one carbocation generation or carbon two position carbocation generation. If you look at this is this carbon two position, this carbocation, if it generate, it is actually a tertiary or carbon 1 if carbocation is generated you can consider this is actually primary because one carbon there another is silicon okay so this tertiary carbocation is relatively more stable compared to the other one so it will be produced fine this thing in the next step what you can expect see this negative charge is somehow stabilized with the bf3 fine but it is not that much completely stabilized and oxygen is having the higher electron density and it can attack this silicon via three member ring formation and this numbering is very useful student please do the numbering while you form any ring or you break any ring so this lone pair will attack in the silicon now question why this nucleophilic attack is favored remember student three member ring formation is associated with proper conformational orientation and you can think that sir three member ring little bigger I agree some strain is there but remember in the ring there is silicon which is somehow bigger in size so ring strain you can expect little less fine so this attack will happen and after that this negative charge will come here how first after just I am showing you step wise so this is oxygen this is silicon uh, so this is the three substitution I am not going 
and the negative and the neighboring carbon is carrying the positive charge now silicon is negative in the next step what it will do silicon will keep this oxygen and this bond will be opened up so this is SiMe2PHO and you can see that the negative charge will come here so this is positive charge this is negative charge and it is attached to oxygen Si this so one pH and another dimethyl so here the question arises now negative charge and positive charge close together so it will produce the alkene so in this way what we are actually getting we are actually getting this is silane to silyl enol ether by the way i have already discussed many lectures on this silyl enol ether or you can consider this thing as enolate okay so please visit for better understanding if you have any doubt now so what is the answer the okay before going to the answer whatever uh, what are the key steps and named reactions associated this first step is the epoxidation of alkene using mcpba that is flizep epoxidation second epoxide opening in presence of neutral medium or lewis acidic i have already discussed these two lectures fine so it will produce this carbocation derivative and finally intramolecular realignment such that this oxygen is inserted between this carbon silicon bond and one alkene is produced so what is the right answer right answer is alkene enol ether a particular thing enol ether which one is enol ether conjugated enol ether no one student only option a so this is the right answer okay so and why not others I have shown the mechanism this formation not possible silicon carbon bond breaking not possible under this reaction condition and double bond reduction is also not possible so if this question appears in your exam less than 30 seconds how can you explain so for that purpose I request you student you keep this reaction of this alkene and MCPBA in mind and second about the property of silicon that is it prefers to form silicon or stable silicon oxygen bond okay so but one reminder I want to give you reminder is about two reactions these reaction whatever we are converting these silane into silyl enol ether okay so this is the MCPBA BF3 ether now there is an another compound this silyl enol ether if it is treated with MCPBA means this one what it resulted it resulted alpha hydroxy carbonyl so this is also a name rubotum oxidation i have already discussed a dedicated lecture on this so please keep this difference in your mind such that you don't get confused in the exam hall now in conclusion what you have learned today that epoxidation of alkene results in three member ring formation which is having strain and these epoxide could be opened in three medium acidic basic a third one is neutral or slightly acidic or lewis acid mediated pathway Finally, this Lewis acid mediated epoxide opening is associated with carbocation type intermediate formation and stable carbocation path will be followed if the epoxide is unsymmetrical. Now, BF3 is actually a good Lewis acid and it has 6 electron in its outermost valence cell that's why it's acting as Lewis acid obviously and alkoxide can act as nucleophile for the silicon center and forms this silicon oxygen bond because this oxygen silicon bond is stronger because of this p pi d pi back bonding means oxygen produce the p pi and silicon produce the d pi because silicon as vacant silicon has energetically accessible vacant d orbital so lone pair of oxygen could be delocalized on the silicon's vacant orbital means this silicon oxygen single bond is not actually a pure single bond it has some partial double bond character okay so this is the end of this discussion i believe this video may be useful please write your opinion in the comment box and if possible please visit my another channel climate and chemistry so this is the end of the discussion. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye-bye.